lived on a farm when we lived hard and hungry sometimes, but there was nine of us in the family, and I was in the middle of it. When I was a little kid, we went to Sunday school at the horse and buggy. When my dad wanted feed, feed for the cattle, he would get the wagoner or the bobsleigh in the winter. He'd leave at 8 o'clock in the morning and he wouldn't get back till 5 at night from the mill. Later on, in uh, about 1930, my dad bought a car and uh, tried to go to church in Sunday school, but he couldn't drive worth a hoot. He was in the ditch all the time. <laughs> when we got so we could drive the car around the farm before we were 16. We were, we were good drivers by comparison. When I was a child, I, my brother and I, we hunted. We hunted fur-bearing animals. That was our spending money. If you want to go back and way back then. We needed money, there was no money. And the skunk hide would bring, a good skunk hide would bring 10 bucks. And one with how big white stripes it would have been two or three dollars for it. But if we, we hunted uh, the skunks where the hereditary, they only had a little narrow strip on them. So we would get the flyers and pull the white hair out and we would sell it as a black skunk. And he was worth 10 bucks. But that was where we got money and, we, and maybe we would be 10, 10, 12 years old. And the mink, we got mink, they, they were 20 bucks at that. You know what 20 bucks was them days? The milk check for a month would be $15 for 30 days from 20 cows. So it was big money, but uh, see, we never got any wages working for dad on the farm. But we were allowed to hunt and trap. Then we got a little bigger, we brought venison in. My dad frowned on that because he never fired a gun in his life. He didn't know where we got it from, but it was my mother's side. But when we brought venison in the house, my mother smiled. She had food. Well, I finished school when I was 12 years old, and I farmed till I was about 17 or 18. Then I ran away and worked at General Motors in St. Catharines. I worked for six years in General Motors, running machines in there, drilling and tapping and machining all our gearboxes and stuff with cars at that era. I joined the service in 42. I was a licensed mechanic in peacetime and Air Force, oh, you're a mechanic. I only had a grade eight education, so they wouldn't let me fly. Then I went to night school in the Air Force and I qualified for air crew. Then we went to a flying school and we, I stayed there till I got my wings as a navigator. And aviation was a new world, not like today. Aviation was only starting. Joining the service was the biggest change in my lifestyle, from a farm boy to that. After the war, we didn't get paid worth a hoot that time, but my brother bought some war assets. He bought 11 Cornells, and, and I was an aero engine mechanic, so that's where I got my most flying, my free flying in. We took two fences out on his farm, and. Uh, Leveled it off, and that was our runway. Oh, every Saturday and Sunday, we had a gang around there <laughs> playing, playing, just playing, yes. No plan at all. He was a farmer, and, and I was a mechanic. <music> 11 years a tobacco farmer. I worked uh, about six or seven years on Baffin Island. I flew there back and forth. Well, I was a master plumber, electrician, everything. Water systems for the natives. I went to another company, Newfoundland, and I worked for them for three years. I worked the building trade in between, built houses. Me and another guy built houses in between. Then when I got old enough and going to Florida, I bought a boat down there, and then I become a, a art fisherman then. I have a pilot's license for till I was 80 years old. Then uh, when I retired in Florida, everybody wanted me to play softball, slow pitch. At 94, I, I couldn't see the ball coming. I got, I got macular degeneration and my eyes failed. I was born on a farm. I knew all about hardship. My theory is that if it's difficult, I can do it. If it's, 
If it's impossible, it takes a little longer. One story I haven't told you, when I come home for Christmas at the Air Force, the bus let me off at the highway and it's two miles down the side road and the snow was up to the telephone wires. I walked over the wires. 